In this video, I'm going to solve the Schrodinger equation in one dimension using the method of separation of variables. This video is part of a playlist on quantum mechanics. You can find the link to this playlist in the description below. Let's go ahead and write down the Schrodinger equation in one dimension and see what we're actually dealing with. So the Schrodinger equation goes like this. We've got I h bar. This is a little imaginary unit I. And h bar is a constant. That's the same as uh, h over 2 pi, or Planck's constant, divided by 2 pi. Then we've got the partial time derivative of the wave function. And this is the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, we have a term uh, that is related to the kinetic energy. And that has a minus h bar squared over 2m. And there's also a second-order partial derivative with respect to position. And finally, we have a term that is related to the uh, potential energy. And it involves the potential energy function v, and that multiplies psi. And this is the wave function represented by psi. So the wave function uh, depends on x and t, and v in general depends on x and t. But we're going to make the assumption uh, in this video that v does not depend on time. So usually you have something like v uh, as a function of x and t. But for this video, because we're going to be using separation of variables, uh, it's going to be a lot easier to deal with potentials that are just functions of position. So v is just a, a function of x. But this guy, psi, it's a function of x and t. So now we actually have everything that we need. This is the type of equation we're dealing with. It's a partial differential equation. And we're going to use the method of separation of variables to turn this partial differential equation into two ordinary differential equations. And ordinary differential equations are a bit easier to solve. We'll see one of them is easy to solve, but one of them is difficult depending on this v. Because depending on what v we have over here, what function we have for the potential energy, we're going to have to use different techniques to solve that ordinary differential equation. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's start off with the method of separation of variables. So first of all, we're going to look for solutions to this equation that are of this form. So psi of x and t needs to be of this form. It has to have a function that depends exclusively on x and one that just depends on time. So this is the form of the function. This is a separable solution. So this over here is a little lowercase psi. And this is a capital psi. So capital psi I'm using to denote the wave function. And lowercase psi I'm using to denote the part of the wave function that depends on position. And this guy over here is a lowercase phi. And phi depends on time. So psi times phi are going to give the capital psi over here. So what we are essentially looking for is solutions that can be split into a product of functions, where one function depends on x and one function depends on t. Not all solutions are going to be separable. But what you will be able to do is construct any solution from the sum of these types of solutions. So this is what we're going to substitute into the Schrodinger equation. Then we're going to turn it into two ordinary differential equations. And after that, after a few videos, we're actually going to have a general solution to this partial differential equation. Let's go ahead and substitute this into here. First of all, we have a constant. Uh, out the front, we have i h bar. So that's not going to be affected at all. What about this partial time derivative? This derivative is just with respect to time. So it's going to ignore anything that has to do with position. So this psi is going to get ignored by this partial time derivative. And that's only going to differentiate this guy over here. So what we're going to get is psi. And I won't write uh, these guys x and t because we've got that explicitly defined over here. So we'll implicitly think of that when we're writing down the equation on this side. So we're going to have psi. It's going to get ignored by the derivative. And then we're going to have d phi dt. So I'm using the total derivative over here because we don't need to use the partial derivative. This only depends on time. So we don't have to keep x fixed because this bit just depends on time. So you can think of it as this is just a constant that's multiplying a function. right? This is just like a normal 1D calculus. There's no uh, multivariable calculus for this little bit over here. The multivariable stuff 
is in this equation, but not in this little term over here. So what we're going to get on this side of the equation is actually the opposite, because we have a derivative with respect to x. So this x derivative is going to act on psi, but it's going to totally ignore this phi term. So what we're going to get is minus h bar squared over 2m. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the second. Oh, actually, I'm going to take, because we're not dealing with partial derivatives, we're dealing with total derivatives now. I'm going to take the second derivative with respect to psi. Uh, sorry, the second derivative of psi with respect to x. And then I'm going to have a phi over here. So can you see what I've done? It's essentially the opposite of what's happening on the left-hand side. Over here, psi gets ignored by the time derivative. And over here, phi gets ignored by the spatial derivative, so the derivatives with respect to x. It doesn't matter the, uh, the fact that we have a second derivative, because you're just differentiating this function twice. These derivative operators are completely ignoring the time uh, dependent function. It's just like a constant that you can factor out. Then what about this final term involving the potential? Well, we're going to have v, and then we'll have psi and phi. So what have we done over here? We have just substituted uh, psi of this form, a separable solution, uh, into the Schrodinger equation. And we, we're just left with ordinary derivatives. These are total derivatives, they're not partial derivatives. Uh, and that's because uh, these derivatives are only acting on functions that have uh, a t or an x, depending on which derivative it is. So what can we do now? Well, we can actually clean this up a bit by dividing by psi and by dividing by phi. So let's go ahead and take this entire equation and multiply it by 1 over psi times phi. So we're going to divide the entire equation by psi, and we're also going to divide it by phi. What's that going to do to the left-hand side? Well, we're going to cancel out this psi. So we're going to be left with is i h bar 1 over phi times the time derivative of phi. So the psi gets canceled, and we're just left with a phi. There's no psi's on this side. It's just phi's. So what about the right-hand side? Well, the right-hand side is going to be minus h bar squared over 2m. And this guy is going to disappear, because we're dividing by it. But we're going to have a 1 over psi, just like we have this pattern on, on the left-hand side. So we're going to have 1 over psi. And we're still going to have that second uh, derivative with respect to x. And what about this term? Well, this term has a psi and a phi. So both of those are going to get canceled. And we're just going to be left with v. So look at this. There's actually a similar pattern emerging on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side. There's just this pesky potential, which is going to complicate things a little later. But have a look. On this side, everything just depends on time. And on this side, everything just depends on position. Because we've assumed that v only depends on x. And psi, lowercase psi, that's just a function of x. So there's no time dependence over here. But these guys are equal. So for any value of time and for any value of position, the left-hand side has to equal the right-hand side. The only way that can happen is if both the left-hand side and the right-hand side are constants. And I'm going to set both of these sides equal to a constant. And that constant is going to be e. And the reason I'm setting it uh, equal to the constant called e is because this is actually the energy. So this constant is the energy. So the left-hand side is going to give us one ordinary differential equation. And this right-hand side is also going to give us an ordinary differential equation. And in later videos, we're going to be dealing with this guy and with this guy. So what have we managed to do in this video? We've turned the Schrodinger equation in one dimension into two separate ordinary differential equations. So the method of separation of variables has turned a partial differential equation into two ordinary differential equations. And this one is going to be difficult to solve, especially if this is complicated. If v is a complicated function, this is going to be difficult to solve. But this is going to be trivial to solve. In fact, this is going to be an exponential function. And we'll solve that in the next video. So uh, just as a quick summary of the steps that we, we chose, separation of variables involves substituting a solution of the form where you can separate the solution into functions exclusively of x and exclusively of t. Uh, 
then that actually allows you to do some tricks with derivatives. And after you divide by both of these functions, you get two separate ODEs. So make sure you watch the next few videos in this playlist where we actually solve these two guys. You can find those if you click over here.